once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, by the way, I hope you enjoyed my opening act, The Yodeling Pickle. Uh, yes, he's on his first world tour, by the way, so uh, be sure and keep an eye out for when he's going to be in your town. Anyway, uh, it is time once again for Backtracks, my monthly roundup of notable album anniversaries, divisible by five, as well as at least one Spotlight album review. So let's just jump right on into the festivities and see which albums are celebrating anniversaries for the month of April 2019. Sixty years ago, Frank Sinatra released Look to Your Heart. It was his third album of collected singles on Capitol Records accompanied by the Nelson Riddle Orchestra. The tracks were recorded between 1953 and 1955, and the album contains three songs from the 1955 musical version of Our Town. Other songs include I'm Gonna Live Till I Die, Same Old Saturday Night, and the title track. Also released in April of 1959 was Cliff Richard's debut album, Cliff. It was recorded live at the EMI Recording Studios, later to be known as Abbey Road Studios, and featured his backing band The Shadows, which were known at the time as The Drifters, not to be confused with the American R&B group The Drifters. The album spent 31 weeks in the top 10 of the UK albums chart, peaking at number 4. Among the album's 18 tracks are covers of Little Richard's Ready Teddy and Richie Valens' Donna, four tunes originally recorded by Elvis Presley, three instrumentals, and Richard's own hit single, Move It. April of 1964 saw the release of When Lights Are Low, one of Tony Bennett's many albums recorded with pianist Ralph Sharon, who, by the way, was responsible for Bennett recording his signature song, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. The album spent 12 weeks on the Billboard 200 charts, peaking at number 79, and it featured the hit songs It Had to Be You, Ain't Misbehavin', Speak Low, and Nobody Else But Me. Also released 55 years ago this month was the Rolling Stones' self-titled debut album. It topped the UK album's chart for 12 weeks, and it contains just one song written by Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, who would go on to write the vast majority of their hits. This song, Tell Me You're Coming Back, reached number 24 in the US and number 1 in Sweden, but was not released as a single in the UK. The rest of the album consists of covers of blues, rock, and R&B hits of the time, such as Willie Dixon's I Just Want to Make Love to You, Chuck Berry's Carol, Rufus Thomas's Walk the Dog, and the Holland Dozier Holland classic Can I Get a Witness. By the way, the album was released in the U.S. a month later under the title England's Newest Headmakers. Happy 50th anniversary this month to Joe Cocker's debut album With a Little Help from My Friends. It reached number 35 on the Billboard 200 and was certified gold. It reached its peak in the U.K. at number 29 three years later. Its title track is, of course, a cover of the Beatles' classic tune, which, and it reached number one in the UK, the Netherlands, and Switzerland, and also went top ten in five other countries. The song was, of course, used as the theme song for the long-running ABC TV series The Wonder Years. Also released as a single was a cover of the Traffic tune Feeling Alright. Other tracks on the album include Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood, which was made famous, of course, by Nina Simone and the Animals, and two songs by Bob Dylan. April of 1969 also saw the release of the self-titled debut album by the Chicago Transit Authority. It peaked on the Billboard 200 at number 17 and spent 171 weeks on the chart, eventually getting certified double platinum. The album also went top 10 in Canada and the UK, and it earned the group a Grammy Award for Best New Artist. The album itself was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame in 2014. Singles include Does Anybody Really Know What Time It Is and Beginnings, both of which peaked at number 7 on the pop singles chart, and Questions 67 and 68, which peaked at number 24. After being threatened with a lawsuit from the real Chicago Transit Authority, the band with their sophomore album shortened their name to Chicago. Happy 45th anniversary this month to Richard and Linda Thompson's I Want to See the Bright Lights Today. It was the second album from the founding member of the Fairport Convention, Richard Thompson, but the first credited to himself and his then-wife, Linda. The album was all but ignored, both commercially and critically, but in the years since has gained widespread critical acclaim. Rolling Stone includes it on their list of the 500 greatest albums of all time, and Mojo listed it among their 100 greatest albums ever made. The title track has been covered by Sleater Kinney, Arlo Guthrie, and Matt Pond, P.A., and Elvis Costello has covered two of the album's tracks over the years, Withered and Died and End of the Rainbow. Also in April of 1974, fans got a second helping of the rock band Leonard Skinner with their sophomore album, Second Helping. It peaked at number 12 on the Billboard Albums chart, was certified gold five months after release, and eventually earned a double platinum certification in July of 1987. 
The album includes the singles Don't Ask Me No Questions, which features Al Cooper on piano and backing vocals, and their smash hit single Sweet Home Alabama, which reached top 10 in the US and Canada. Backing vocals on the track were provided in part by Mary Clayton, who would later duet with Mick Jagger on the Rolling Stones single Gimme Shelter. And as a very interesting trivia note, none of the three writers of that song were actually from Alabama. Ronnie Van Zant and Gary Rossington were from Florida, and Ed King was from California. Four decades ago this month, Thin Lizzy released their ninth album, Black Rose. Produced by Tony Visconti, it was the band's highest charting and one of their most successful albums, peaking at number two on the UK albums chart and number eight on the Swedish charts. Lead single Waiting for an Alibi reached the top ten on the UK and Irish charts, while the follow-up singles Do Anything You Want To and Sarah reached the top forty on both charts. And as a trivia note, soon-to-be star Huey Lewis played harmonica on Sarah and the album track With Love. Also released in April of 1975 was Squeeze's sophomore album Cool for Cats. It spent 11 weeks at its peak position of number 45 on the UK albums chart and produced four successful singles, more than any other Squeeze album. The title track and Up the Junction reached number two on the singles charts, and Goodbye Girl ranked at number 63, while Slap and Tickle peaked at number 24. In April of 1984, Banana Rama, or if you're in England, I guess that would be Banana Rama, released their self titled sophomore album. It reached number 30 on the Billboard 200 charts, number 16 on the UK chart, and number 9 in Switzerland. Its success was propelled by the hit single Cruel Summer, which went top 10 in the UK, France, Ireland, and the US, and was featured in the soundtrack from the movie Karate Kid. A cover version of the song would become a top 10 hit for Swedish group Ace of Bass some 14 years later. Other singles include Robert De Niro's Waiting, which went top 10 in the UK, Germany, Ireland, and Switzerland, and Rough Justice, which went top 20 in the UK and Ireland, as well as Hotline to Heaven and The Wildlife. Also released 35 years ago this month was Journey frontman Steve Perry's solo debut album Street Talk. It peaked at number 12 on the Billboard 200 and was eventually certified double platinum, and it reached number 59 on the UK charts. Lead single Oh Sherry topped the Billboard Mainstream Rock Tracks chart and reached number 3 on the Billboard Hot 100. Follow-up single Foolish Heart went top 20 on the Billboard Hot 100, and further singles She's Mine and Strung Out also peaked in the top 40. Happy 30th anniversary this month to Richard Marx's sophomore album Repeat Offender. It spent 66 weeks on the Billboard 200 chart, picking at number 1, and was certified triple platinum by the end of the year. It also topped the Australian Albums chart. It featured the number one single Satisfied and Right Here Waiting, and the top 20 singles Angelia, Too Late to Say Goodbye, and Children of the Night. Musicians featured on the album include Toto guitarist Steve Lukather, saxophonists Dave Cause and Tom Scott, and bassist and future American Idol judge Randy Jackson. Also released in April of 1989 was Tom Petty's Full Moon Fever. It was his first solo album without the Heartbreakers, but does include contributions by some of the band. It also features Jeff Lynne, who co-produced, as well as George Harrison and Roy Orbison, his bandmates in The Traveling Wilburys. The album peaked at number three on the Billboard 200 and was eventually certified five times platinum. It also went top 10 in the UK, Canada, New Zealand, Norway, and Sweden. Its most successful single, Free Fallen, went top 10 in the US, Canada, and New Zealand, and singles I Won't Back Down and Running Down a Dream reached the top 40 in the US and Canada. A quarter of a century ago, Hole released their sophomore album, Live Through This. It peaked at number 52 on the Billboard 200 chart, but by some bizarre coincidence, it peaked at number 13 on the UK, Australian, and Belgian album charts. The album was eventually certified platinum by the RIAA a year later. It also made the all-time greatest albums lists of Rolling Stone, NME, and Time magazines, and was featured in the book 1001 Albums You Must Hear Before You Die. All five of the album's singles reached the top 20 of the Billboard Alternative Songs chart, with Dull Parts peaking at number 4. The album's title is derived from a quote from Gone with the Wind, but took on a bitter irony as it was released one week after whole frontwoman Courtney Love's husband, Kurt Cobain, committed suicide. Also celebrating its 25th anniversary this month is Johnny Cash's 81st album, American Recordings. Produced by Rick Rubin, this was a collection of just stripped-down recordings of just Cash and his guitar. It marked a career resurgence for the legendary country artist, whose sales have been suffering for the past 20 years. The album peaked at number 23 on the Billboard Country Albums chart and number 110 on the Billboard 200. In Canada, it reached number 9 on the Country Albums chart and number 72 on the Top Albums chart. Along with five of his own songs, the album features interpretations of songs by Nick Lowe, 
Leonard Cohen, Tom Waits, and Chris Christopherson. The album won Cash a Grammy Award for Best Contemporary Folk Album, and Rolling Stone ranked it at number 366 on their list of the greatest albums of all time. And as a trivia note, uh, despite the album title American Recordings, the cover photo was actually shot in Australia. Happy 20th anniversary this month to Tal Backman's self-titled debut album. It only reached number 124 on the Billboard 200, but it peaked at number one on the Billboard Heat Seekers chart. Hit single She's So High hit number three on Canada's RPM singles chart and stayed on the chart for 15 months. In the US, it reached number 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 and number one on the Adult Top 40. It was also a top 10 hit in Australia and New Zealand. The album scored two Juno Awards, that's the Canadian version of the Grammys, for Breakthrough Artist and Producer of the Year for Bob Rock. It also scored two nominations, Songwriter of the Year and Pop Album of the Year. In 2003, She's So High would become a hit for Norwegian Idol winner Kurt Nilsson. It reached number one on the charts and became Norway's best-selling single to date. Also released in April of 1999 was The Ben Folds Five's third album, The Unauthorized Biography of Reinhold Messner. It enjoyed a nine-week run on the Billboard 200, peaking at number 35. The single Army reached number 17 on the Billboard Modern Rock Tracks chart. Incidentally, the band didn't realize until they were in the middle of recording the album that there actually is a Reinhold Messner. He's a mountaineer who was the first man to climb Mount Everest solo and the first to do so without the aid of an oxygen tank. And in case you're wondering, Mr. Messner later informed the band that he was highly pleased with the album. In April of 2004, Loretta Lynn released her 39th album, Van Leer Rose. It was produced by Jack White and was the most successful crossover album of Lynn's career. It peaked at number two on the Billboard Country Albums chart and number 24 on the Billboard 200. The album won a Grammy for Best Country Album, and the single, Portland, Oregon, won a Grammy for Best Country Collaboration with Vocals. That song, along with Miss Being Misses, I love the titles of country songs, both received Grammy nominations for Best Country Song. Ratings-wise, this album has the highest aggregate score of all time for a female artist and is tied for highest all-time score, period, at Metacritic.com. The album title, incidentally, refers to Lynn's father having worked in the Van Leer coal mines. Also released 15 years ago this month was Modest Mouse's fourth album, Good News for People Who Love Bad News. It peaked at number 18 on the Billboard 200 and number 40 on the UK Albums Chart, and was certified platinum four months after release. Lead single Float On topped the Billboard Modern Rock Tracks chart and reached number 46 on the UK Singles Chart. Follow-up single Ocean Breathe Salty reached number 6 and number 96 respectively on the same charts. Uh, the Flaming Lips perform on the album track The Good Times Are Killing Me, and the Dirty Dozen Brass Band appear on This Devil's Work Day. Ten years ago this month, indie synth-pop act Young Love released One of Us, their sophomore album on Island Records, following the admittedly modest recognition of their debut, Too Young to Fight It, which had a number three single on the Bubbling Under chart and songs heard on TV shows such as Scrubs and One Tree Hill. Now, I really like these guys. They're a, a real hidden gem in my collection, aside from having one of the coolest album covers ever. I mean, that's just beautiful. Uh, they're just a very, you know, kind of dance-oriented, although maybe a little bit less on this sophomore album than on their first album. Just, you know, good synth, indie synth rock. I think, uh, Noah, I think you would really like these guys. Check them out. Uh, but yeah, just a real a hidden gem in my collection. It's, you know, not a noteworthy album in terms of music history, but it's one that I had to mention on Backtracks. Anyway, also released in April of 2009, and this kind of goes along with Young Love in terms of the recognition factor, you know, pretty insignificant band in the grand scheme of things, but uh, it's a group and an album that I felt deserved uh, recognition, deserved a little shout out, Tinted Windows. It is the self-titled album by a supergroup consisting of vocalist Taylor Hansen of Hansen, Smashing Pumpkins guitarist James Eha, Fountains of Wayne bassist Adam Schlesinger, and drummer Bunny Carlos of Cheap Trick. Now, Schlesinger was the primary songwriter and co-produced the album along with Eha. Now, it peaked at number 59 on the Billboard 200, and the album single, Kind of a Girl, was released to radio and promoted through the band's appearances on David Letterman and Jimmy Fallon. But I don't think that single even charted, uh, at least not significantly. But as I said, it's just it deserves a listen. It's just great garage rock kind of stuff. Uh, you know, And I mean, one other thing that really appealed to me about this was the cross-generational... Uh, assemblage of artists. I mean, guys from the 60s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s, really. So give Tinted Windows a try if you like, you know, just good old stuff that straddles the line between power pop and garage rock. Give them a try. 
Five years ago this month, Paolo Nutini released his third album, Caustic Love. It debuted at number one on the UK Albums Chart and held onto the spot for three weeks. It was the fastest selling album of its year in the UK, eventually going double platinum. Lead off single Scream Funk My Life Up peaked at number 12 on the UK Singles Chart and also went top 20 in Ireland and New Zealand. Follow up single Let Me Down Easy reached number 47 in the UK but hit number 2 on the Billboard Adult Alternative Chart. Third single Iron Sky barely missed the UK Top 40 by peaking at number 42 but it achieved late success in the Netherlands when it climbed to number 24 shortly after the Charlie Hebdo attack in Paris, perhaps due in part to its politically undertoned sampling of Charlie Chaplin dialogue from the movie The Great Dictator. Also released in April of 2014 was Pop Psychology, the third album by Neon Trees. Material from the album grew out of frontman Tyler Glenn's therapy sessions during a turbulent personal time when he was dealing with his sexuality and his spirituality. The album debuted at number 6 on the Billboard 200 and number 1 on the Billboard Rock Albums chart. Lead-off single Sleeping with a Friend reached number 51 on the Billboard Hot 100 and the top 10 of the Billboard Adult Top 40 and Hot Rock Songs charts. Okay, that's it for the anniversary albums. Let's just delve right on into the Spotlight albums. I've got two again this month for you. Uh, the first one is Road Food by the Guess Who. It is their 12th album, released in April of 1974, so it's 45 years old this month. And this is an obscure album. Uh, the band is not necessarily obscure. It's a Canadian band. I'm sure you've heard of them. They were a favorite band of my sister's, and so that's one reason why I decided to pick a Guess Who album uh, as a Spotlight album this month. Uh, this was actually the last album to feature guitarists Kurt Winter and Donnie McDougall. It reached number 60 on the Billboard 200 charts, and uh, I, it, it's pretty good. I, I'm not really, really well versed in the Guess Who stuff. I have a three-disc Ultimate Collection, I think it's called, uh, that I inherited from my sister. Uh, of course, it's got a great, bunch of great songs. I mean, they're responsible for American Woman and probably a bunch of other songs I can't think of right now. Uh, Clap for the Wolfman is probably the biggest single off of this album, uh, featuring legendary radio DJ Wolfman Jack on guest vocals, which is kind of a cool thing. I kind of grew up listening to Wolfman Jack. So, uh, yeah, uh, it's got a lot of songs that fall into uh, the band's you know trademark sound, their classic sound from American Woman and other songs. Uh, Star Baby is one of those, uh, that classic Guess Who sound, and uh, the title track Road Food is another enjoyable one. And honestly, they're, they're all pretty enjoyable. I, I can't say I have a whole lot to say about this album, really, uh, except, uh, I mean, there, there are a couple of different songs, the ones that stand out. Uh, Don't You Want Me is, uh, it's not a, it's not the Human League song. The Human League wrote that one. This is a, just another song with the same title. But uh, yeah, Don't You Want Me, it's got uh, kind of an Elvis-like rockabilly feel to it. It's Kind of, it was something new, something unexpected from Guess Who, but uh, yeah, I mean, I I can't find really a bad track on this album, uh, except you know, as I said, I just don't have a whole lot to say about this album. It's enjoyable. I'm very very glad I picked it up. Uh, it, because of my sister, as I mentioned, I am certainly not uh, ashamed or regretful of adding an album to my guess uh, from the Guess Who to my library. So. That was a, a good album, and yeah, I, I'm sorry I just didn't have a whole lot to say about it. But uh, the second album, and I don't know if I'm going to have a whole lot to say about this one either, quite honestly. I mean, I, I gave you good reviews of the last month's albums. I just, I just love those. So, I mean, these were kind of bound to be a letdown in a way. But anyway, the second Spotlight album is by the Moody Blues. It is On the Threshold of a Dream. This was their fourth album. I'm going to get rid of the camera glare there. Uh, it was released uh, five years previously, April of 1969, so it is celebrating its 50th anniversary this month. And this actually uh, got the Moody Blues their first UK number one album, and it was their first top 20 US album. So that's interesting trivia for you there. Uh, this is, uh, yeah, the Moody Blues are kind of a prog rock band, at least uh, they were in some stages of their career. So it's it's got a little bit, a little bit of weird stuff in here, some, some spoken word kind of stuff, like on the opening track in the beginning, and it's got a lot of, you know, that track has some random sound effects and stuff also inserted into it, so that was a little weird. It starts out with a very droning, kind of a quiet droning thing, and then it builds into, it's got, develops this spoken word stuff and the sound effects and stuff. And also The Dream, which is on, which is on side two, that's another uh, odd spoken word interlude kind of a track. Uh, but it's got plenty of, of great great songs on it. Uh, Send Me No Wine is one that stood out to me. It's got a real good syncopated danceable beat 
uh, and it's it's just a good folkish kind of a tune. It kind of brings out a, a folkish vibe, uh, as I said. And uh, another song called Lazy Day, that's on side two, that has a, a bouncy rhythm as well, but the thing that really stood out to me on that one was that it seemed to have a melancholy feel to it. Um, I don't know, maybe it was written in a minor key. I, I, I don't know the mechanics of music, so I couldn't tell you what a minor key is as opposed to a major key, so yeah. But uh, that, you know, I suppose that could be possibly uh, the reason why it has a kind of a melancholy feel to it, uh, despite the bouncy rhythm. And then uh, The Voyage, which is the next to last track on here, that's uh, you know, four minutes, so it's not very long, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a very proggy, moody kind of an instrumental. It's got uh, strings in it and a piano, which sounds like it's been processed in some way. So yeah, that's, that is definitely the most prog-like track on this album. So yeah. This is a, a very good album, and uh, again, with the Moody Blues, kind of like with the Guess Who, I'm familiar with their singles. I have a two-disc um, best-of collection in my CD uh, library. So this was my first album exposure to the guest, to the uh, Moody Blues. Uh, it was enjoyable, I have to say, and uh, yeah. So yeah, another pair of enjoyable Spotlight albums for this month's Backtracks. I, oh, sorry if you noticed a difference in the lighting. Um, the battery in the old light was running out, so I had to swap it out real quick. Uh, but yeah. I do not regret picking up either of those albums or listening to them. I'm just sorry I didn't have more to say about them. But uh, yeah, that's one of the things, uh, I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again. Uh, one of the things I love about this Backtracks feature is getting to explore music I haven't listened to before. In my opinion, not knowing if you're going to like something until you hear it is part of the fun. So uh, yeah, and also of course I'm exploring vinyl more. I'm, I'm getting into it, an underappreciated genre in my personal music history. But anyway, that's it for Backtracks for April of 2019, and that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I appreciate feedback, whether about this video or anything on my channel, or about music in general. I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. I invite you to subscribe to my channel as well, and check out my past videos to see what you might have missed. I am also on Twitter, and you can find the link to my Twitter feed in the description below, so check it out and follow along. And also, please take the time to visit my friends and fellow YouTubers channels, which are also linked to in the description below. They're all great at what they do, and they're very much worth your attention. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time, and remember, life's too short to be a music snob.